Okay, so in this video, I'm going to work out the scattering amplitude for these, you know, scattering of two B particles. So, um, I already did this for the case of uh, the complex scalar field. And so you should probably go watch that first if you don't know how that goes, because if you go through that, then it will make going through this a whole lot easier and I'm not going to go through all the all the details because really a lot of the same things hold here the only difference now is we have to uh, deal with these spinners in our fields but so basically we have our initial state and our final state here and uh, I the I guess key dif main difference from the complex scalar field is now we have the spinner indices that we're carrying along and obviously our field expansions are different. Uh, and since our states only involve these B particles, we can pretty much ignore the C parts of our fields. And that tells us that psi goes as uh, B and psi dagger goes as B dagger. And that'll be important later. And then just to emphasize another difference is that before our all our creation operators um, they commuted if they corresponded to different you know momenta and whatever uh, so or even if they correspond to the same momenta but they they commuted is the point so I could flip these things and that wouldn't change the state but now these will anti-commute so if I flip these I get a minus sign. So that's important. So our, our bra will look like this instead of this. So there's a minus sign difference between these two states. And so our, again, our Lagrangian is going to look like this. It's basically just the free, you know, free scalar field and then the free Dirac field and then this interaction term, the Yukawa interaction term. And so are, if we look at this process, it involves, so to get from this state to this state, I would have to destroy these two B particles and then create two more B particles. And so the first order term and the expansion of this operator, uh, you, couldn't, you couldn't get to from this state to this state with that term uh, because you only have you know, one pair of psi bar and psi. So the lowest order contribution is this term. And so you have to you know, work out what is the time ordering of this big thing. And it, again, it works just it works out pretty much exactly the same way as it did for the complex scalar field. The only term that will contribute is the term involving um, you know, just this contraction so that these four operators are left over, and so we have two psi bars and two psi's, so the psi's will destroy the B particles, and then psi bars will create two more B particles. And again, if that's not making any sense, if you go and watch the other, uh, you know, <laughs> the video for the complex scalar field and real scalar field interaction, then uh, it'll make a lot more sense. So, um, yeah, so we have this term, so that's, we can replace this time ordering with this, and this is our scattering operator, basically. And so, if we compute this thing, and again, it's, we do S minus 1 just because if, um, we just want to know the probability that the particles scatter off each other, I guess, something like that. Uh, but uh, so this will just be uh, this. So I just plug this in, and um, yeah, I can pull out the integrals here and this contraction. And so I'll, I need to work out this um, thing just like before. So I have to do the normal ordering first. 
And to do that, we just have to remember that psi will go as b, and psi dagger will go as b dagger, and psi bar is basically psi dagger, just with the, you know, gamma knot. So, um, uh, okay, so, oh, yeah, so the normal ordering of this, I will just move this psi 1 past this psi 2 bar, because all my psi should be to the right, because they are the annihilation operators. So two important things about this. One is that I, when I move this past, it anti-commutes, so I get a minus sign. The second thing is, although I've written like this, when I've written it like this, it looks like psi 2 is now being contracted with psi 1, and then I guess psi 1 would contract with psi 2, but that's not what happens. Psi 1 still contracts with psi 1, and psi 2 still contracts with psi 2. These normal ordering uh, operation, it only affects the creation and annihilation operators. It doesn't do anything to the uh, Dirac spinners. So it doesn't affect the fact that you're contracting psi 1 bar with psi 1. So uh, that's just something to keep in mind. So when I go here, so the first thing, I'm following uh, David Tong's calculation, we're just going to worry about psi 1 and psi 2 first. So I just need the expansions of my fields. Uh, where are they? They're up here. And I, again, I only have to worry about this term, so it makes it a little bit easier. But I have these integrals, and I don't think I write the sums. I just leave it as an implied sum, because there's two uh, you know, indices. So if you just plug in those expressions for psi, you will get this. And so I'm, um, and then I expanded, you know, I is um, this thing. So uh, yeah, so I'm using a few dummy indices here. I'm using M as the dummy spinner sum index for the psi one and N for the dummy spinner index for psi two. And, you know, I have to say, I don't know how, because there's just a lot of stuff going on. And unless you're going through it, you know, with me, I don't know how much sense it will make. But at least, you know, I can show some steps. And hopefully if you go through it, you can kind of um, see if you get the same expressions along the way. But so basically, yeah, so we're, we're just working with this. And we're just going to expand psi1 and psi2, and uh, yeah, that's what I get. And then, um, so, okay, so what am I doing here? So I'm just collecting things, basically. So again, psi1 is a spinner, so it, it's still contracting with the spinner from psi uh, psi, psi 1 bar is still contracting with the spinner from psi 1. So we're just making that more explicit here by putting these brackets and with this dot. And I'm just moving all the b's to the right and then getting my exponential terms. I just pull that out. So uh, yeah, so this is the same, you know, same thing. I'm just rearranging the, uh, the items uh, to this. And now what we have to do is work out, so we have to, to find out, you know, evaluate this, we need to commute these b's past these b daggers using our anti-commutation relations. So to do that, I'm going to take this, you know, basically this these four b's here, and I'm going to work out, you know, using the anti-commutation relations, what they are uh, equal to. So... Um, which actually is not as bad as it seemed like it was going to be at first. So first I commute, I, or rather I anti-commute uh, BK2N and BPS. So I can replace that with minus BP, uh, you know, these two things flipped, and then plus 2 pi delta 3 
K2 minus P delta, Kronecker delta N S, and then this is still there. And then I just, um, so I think I, um, oh, well, yeah, so I, I just, you know, um, distribute this out. So I get these two terms. And then I, so in this term, I will anti-commute. Uh, what do I anti-commute here? Oh, I anti-commute, okay, yeah. So basically what I do is I anti-commute uh, BK1M, BPS dagger, and I anti-commute BK2N and BQR dagger. So that's why I have these two um, parentheses here. So basically this, these two things, when I, well, minus these two things, when I do the anti-commutation relation, I get this. And then these two things, when I anti-commute them, I get this. So that's how I have this product here. And then I can, in this term, I can just anti-commute these two things. And one term, I will have a, a lowering operator on the right, which will just annihilate my ground state. So I can throw that away. So the only term I'll have left over is the term involving the uh, delta function. So I get a product of delta functions, just like I did for, again, I, this, this is working very similarly to how it worked out before uh, for the complex scalar field, there we also had to do multiple commutator, commutations to evaluate these expressions. Uh, but what's really nice here is that, so I have these things and I have to FOIL this, these two uh, things, but are in three of the terms that I get out of this, I will have a lowering operator on the right. So in, and the two terms, you know, involving this, this times this, and this times this, I have this lowering operator on the right. So those terms are going to annihilate the ground state, so I can throw those away. And then in the other term, I'll have the two delta functions, and the other term I'll have this and this. So the only so I'll have a lowering operator to the right, so that term will go away. So the only term that ends up giving a non-zero contribution is the term involving these two delta functions. So in the end, what I get is just two terms that both involve products of all these delta functions, uh, these things. And again, it's kind of, you know, you have to be careful keeping track of all the indices here, but uh, you can do it, I believe, I believe in you. Uh, so we get these two things. So what that means is all, all that will happen is, so like before, well, first off this two pi to the six goes away, P is going to become K2 and Q is going to become K1 or vice versa. Either way, these energy terms are going to cancel out. So all that I'll be left with is my spinners. And uh, because of the delta functions, I'll be integrating so I can get rid of these integrals. So all that will happen is I'll, that'll be left over is I'll have these spinner contractions and this exponential where I just have to replace all the uh, momenta and spinner labels with the correct things. So if you do that, you end up with two terms that look like this. So again, I just have my spinner contractions left over and my exponential terms. I have two terms and one has a plus sign, one's a minus sign and uh, still acting on my ground state. So uh, that's, a, that's a good place to stop for now. Um, if you get to this, you know, this is, I guess, a checkpoint if you want. If you, if you can get to that expression first, then that's, uh, that's a good, good thing.